Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyce and Grove, and today we're going to show you how to make a really cool rocket that lights up. Let's get into it. That is so cool. If you Google rocket lamps, you'll see that there are tons of different designs, but I really like the simple classic look. Now there's probably tons of different ways that you can build this really easily, especially if you're going to paint it, but I really want to leave my natural wood and I would like all the grain to be going the same direction vertically up the lamp. Now I don't have any wood that's large enough to do what I want to do, but I do have a 4x4 and I have an idea. If I split a couple pieces of 4x4 diagonally and then flip them all so the diagonal side is facing out, then that will form a larger piece of wood giving me the size that I want. I know, it's kind of a long way around. I attach a sacrificial board to my table saw fence so I can get right up next to the blade. This idea worked pretty good, but since I don't have a planer or a jointer, I did struggle a little bit getting the sides flat enough to each other to seal without any large gaps. Once my massive block of wood was dry, I cut off all four corners of the table saw. This will be less material that I have to try to remove when making it round. I don't have a lathe, so I set to work on my bench sander and with my orbital sander to get a cylinder shape. Now you might be saying, but Taylor, didn't you show us a big lathe in your shop during the shop tour this year? Yes, there is a big lathe in my shop, but it's in pieces and it's older. I'm not familiar with lathes at all, so I'm not sure if all the pieces are there. I've been trying to piece it together, but until I'm 100% sure that I have it completely dialed in, I really don't want to experiment with it. Once I had my hunk of wood as cylindrical as I could get it, I moved to the miter saw to cut it to length. I used a quarter inch straight bit in my router to create a groove in both pieces in order to hold the lamp's cylinder shade piece. For the lamp cylinder shade, I decided to go with the plastic container that my zip ties came in. I sanded the outside of the container to help hide the light fixture in the lamp and diffuse the light. Now, where to put all these zip ties? That's a very good question. Starting with the lamp base, I used a 2 inch Forstner bit and a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit to create a hole where the lights will go and a pocket that will house the wiring. I cut a circle from some quarter inch plywood and attached it to a piece of 1 inch dowel. This will hold the LED strips in place. With this post temporarily installed, I used a quarter inch Forstner bit to drill a hole for the wiring to feed through. I used a rabbit bit to create a lip and cut another circle to use as the cap to cover the wiring.
Then I used a very large roundover bit in my router to put a roundover on the bottom of the lamp base. Now the top of the lamp is going to be a little trickier because it needs to be a cone shape, which would be really simple if I had the lathe up and running, but I don't. I did, however, receive this power carving disc from Graph, and I've never done power carving before, but there's no time to try than the present, right? Man, does this thing remove material. I realized real quick that I had to be really careful to not get carried away. Thanks to Graph for this awesome carving disc. I'll leave a link to this disc in the description below so you can check it out. After carving, sanding, and more sanding, I got the top to a place where I was happy with the shape. After some experimenting with different shapes, I came up with a shape for the rocket's fins that I was really happy with, so I cut four of them out of some 3 quarter inch pine scraps. Attaching the fins was super awkward with all the angles and curves, not to mention trying to get shots without blocking the camera. With the body of the lamp complete, I moved on to the lighting. I used an LED kit that I had, I'll leave a link to the one that I used in the description below. I started by feeding it through the cap and then through the hole in the post. Then I wrapped it around the post, testing to make sure that the post still slid into the lamp okay. Once the lighting was installed, I could see that the individual LEDs were really visible, so I lined the inside of the cylinder with some label paper and that ended up working really great. After some puttying and a little bit more sanding, I applied a couple coats of spray-on satin lacquer to the base and the top. Kraken, you're a go for launch in three, two, one, blast off! All right, our rocket ship lamp is finished, and I gotta tell you, I was a little skeptical going into this project. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to pull off forming these large pieces of wood, but it actually turned out really well. You probably noticed in the video that I did not show how to attach the cylinder to the pieces of wood, and that's because I didn't. The fit that this cylinder has in both pieces of wood is so tight that there's no need for any adhesive or anything, and I kind of like the idea that I can take it apart if anything ever happens to the lamp kit. Using the label paper inside the cylinder worked out perfectly. I really like the way that it diffuses the light. You can no longer see the individual LEDs. This particular light kit is really cool. It not only has settings right here on the cord itself, but it also has a remote with tons of different kinds of settings that even include time settings and my favorite, voice activation. Now I know this project is a little bit different. It's not something that I'm gonna be creating a set of plans for. There were a lot of complications and a lot of trial and error, but I hope it encourages you to tackle some out of the box projects of your own. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe and have a great day.